Peabody, Mr. Peabody, that guy, that guy coming in your store without a mask. He need a mask, Mr. Peabody. I got a mask. You got a mask. Come on. Everybody at Intel had a mask. What? You ain't got no rules. You know you need the rules. Come on. I got a new kidney, man. I got to protect my kidney, my transplant. Look, I'm not doing 20, 12, more, 12 more years of dialysis. That is out of the question. Out of the, I don't have to call nobody or report anything. You know what? I'm gonna call that advocate. I'm gonna call that lady. I forgot her name. Lita Lada Loda. Loda. Hold no, it's Lisa. Lisa Baxter, because this is the Lisa Baxter show. Giving you the 411 in the kidney world. Hey y'all. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Happy Sunday to you. I got a wonderful show for you tonight. Yes. A fantabulous show. Believe it or not, that really happened to me while I was in the store. And somebody did come in without a mask. And the person tried to, you know, shuck it off. But, you know, we got to protect ourselves out here. And we got to do the right thing. We don't want to get sick. We don't want to make nobody else sick. So we got to do the right thing. How about that? So let's warm in, drive in, slide right into the show tonight. Let me introduce my guest. Well, I call her Miss Oliveria because that's all I had to call her when she was my supervisor for eight years, okay, when we worked on the same job. So I'm going to introduce her. This woman got her MDiv. She, uh, she has her clinical pastoral care counselor. She's ordained as an a, associate pastor. She um, has a citation and a proclamation from city officers, right? Um, she worked with families in crisis. How about that? Yeah, she worked with families in crisis, and um, she uh, she was a family service coordinator for Catholic charities for so so many 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 years. All right, but I'm gonna let her tell the rest of her story, and she can tell you better than I can tell you. Introducing Miriam Martinez. Come on. <laughs> Have a voice. Hey, to be present. Hey, Miss Alicia, how are you? Welcome to the Lisa Baxter Show. Woo! Amen, amen. Thank you, Lisa. It's a privilege for me, a wonderful privilege to be part of your show. I have seen it for many times, and I'm blessed every time that I see it. Uh, I had the privilege to work with you in Catholic charities, and I thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity to serve him in so many different capacities. Uh, I started ministry at a very young age as a missionary, and I went to Bible school in Puerto Rico. From there, I came back and served my church for many years. Then uh, one time I was walking on Sunset Park, near the park on 43rd Street, and I told some pastors, it would be a wonderful thing if we do a mission here. A year later, they called us. There was a pastor that had a heart attack. He just had opened up a new mission. And they told us to go there for a week. The week turned into a month, and the month turned into almost 18 years. So uh, I did pastor a church with my late husband. I also co-pastored three different churches, and I had the wonderful opportunity uh, not only to serve in the pastoral position, but also God gave me the blessing 
to be a chaplain residence, you know, a student and work with Reverend Maria Lopez, uh, not only in the prison system for nine years where I helped her and she tutored me and we did wonderful work within Bedford Hills facility for many years. Me as a volunteer and she was the official chaplain there. Then uh, the Christian Church Disciple of Christ ordained me, but for ordination I had to encounter many studies in order to get my NDIF, Master of Divinity. And I did work in the church with the homeless, feeding the homeless for many years, counseling them and referring them for services. So I did work as a Christian counselor and also as a social worker with many men that were homeless. And I thank the Lord also because I have worked within my organization on the board, uh, the Northeastern Church Disciples of Christ, where I work with the American people and also I'm a represented with the Spanish division. And uh, I always say, where there's always a need, I want to be there. Uh, wow. God has blessed me in many ways. My children also are ministers of music. I have a, a daughter that is also a minister. I have two nephews that are also ministers. I have nephews that are pastors. And out of the church that I pastor, I have more than nine people that went out and opened up churches and are pastors today. Wow. So well, I know. To them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have a long history because I have went out with you when you ministered. I have helped you minister. I have went to the prisons with you also when you went to the woman's prison. Um, and I, you were my supervisor for the eight years at uh, at St. Malachi's working with Catholic Charities. And I learned a lot from you and I saw you do a lot. And um, I was glad to be able to help you as well. But, yes. Wow, wow. Now, what job did you have before you came to uh, Catholic Charities? Well, first I started as a family worker. Then mm -hmm. after two years, they appoint me family assistant. And then by the third year, I was already family service coordinator. And you're so right when you said that you worked along with me. Teamwork is very important. Without a team, I wasn't able to do all the work that was necessary. And we just not did work within the four walls of Catholic Charities. We went out to the community. We worked with community leaders, with different mm -hmm. agencies. They did not only service us, but we serviced them also. And oh, that's right. Yes, when we started working with Catholic Charity, it was very different from now. We had to not only accommodate your children in daycare and Head Start and monitor their medical records, but also we had to work with the families, uh, giving them ESL, English as a Second Language, and job mm -hmm. referrals, and mm -hmm. some of the trainings that we did for the parents. You were part of that training for a very long well, time. Yeah. Yes. The public assistance program, the back to work program, we, we had it started there. Oh, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. We had to work with the whole family. So if it was a mother, father, grandmother, the children, so you couldn't just give child care. You had to help the whole family as a whole. Yes. And not only that, uh, many of those families today have professions. Many of them are teachers, they're nurses, oh, yes. they're store owners and so many other different jobs. And they're very grateful to us and we're grateful to them for giving us that opportunity to bless them in so many ways. Also, within my experience, I did serve in September 11, disaster for more than a year and a half as a spiritual counselor also. And the airplane crashed at Kennedy Airport and some of the hurricanes like Sandy and so many other devastating, tragic, you know, things that have happened here in New York City, we have been part of that. And it's a privilege, you know, to service the needy, like I say, we have learned a lot. And- Oh, uh, you have, yes. Yeah, yes. Not only our title, but it's what we do with what we have. 
Well, you, I know you did pastoral care also in the hospitals, because I remember you were doing pastoral care and you were helping people that um, a death in the family, people that had death in the family. You had to deal a lot with that. I remember when you first started that. Yes, I did more than six units where I did the trauma center. In Brookdale, I did three years, uh, the emergency trauma center. Uh, I went with a lot of the families, even some of our families from our work site, lost loved ones in fire, and we, we were there for them. We were there when someone got shot and killed in the street. You know, we were there with those families also. So it's not only a, a matter of giving them spiritual care, but also giving them resources that they needed during those days and those moments. And I like because my team was very dedicated. You know, I'm very proud of my team when we work. I remember the days that we had to stay up to 10 o'clock at night finishing paperwork because we were out helping people in need. For us, the main thing was helping those people in need. We did, you know, always completed our paperwork and our requirements. But, uh, with a lot no, of paperwork. God that. knows. I, I'm still doing paperwork. I was doing paperwork yesterday, and we supposed to have been on vacation. I ain't mad at you. Tell it. Tell it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we had to give up our vacation. One of the wonderful experiences that I had was to travel with Catholic charities to different conferences, conventions, to represent also Catholic charities like I do today in my organization representing also the Spanish division. And uh, I always say there's always a little room for us to do the impossible. I admire you, your sacrifice that you have gone through, and you have said always yes. You're that type of a person that said, I am not going to lay down for no one. I'm not going <laughs> to stop working for no one. And you continue on the job. So, you know, we have to admire that. And God has blessed you and God has taken you to high places because you deserve it. You're going you're gonna to stop me up here. I, 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 you're going to stop me crying and I, I'm going to lose focus. Oh, my goodness. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you're doing well, too. I mean, you're doing very excellent, too. You're carrying yourself well. You're doing well. And I even saw Joey in the corner there. He, he got your back back there, all of your children, even your grandchildren. So I do appreciate that. You know, you, you, it's a family affair with you. And you're a great translator as well. You were able to translate for uh, the church as well as translate at the job, you know, for the parents and everything. So that was a big help um, with translation. And um, one thing I could say, too, about you, besides you translating, and, and doing so many things, you, you know, you, you work with your team. I, I got to say you did, you do, and you did work with your team. How do you think um, you served the community? How would you think that you served all the communities that you had to serve or go to because you had to travel as well? How did you think, um, I know this, because I know some of them are still saying thank you. So how did you think that you felt doing that. What made you even take this position of, um, before I get into ministry, what made you take the position of even getting into social work? Yes, well, I, I had my bachelor when I came into Catholic Charities. And uh, one of the things that a family service coordinator is required to work in the community and represent you know, Catholic Charities in the community. And by the way, we're nearing elections. The workers and the parents had involvement in every election during those years. We were out in the street giving flyers, representing our leaders. I remember uh, on that occasion, we represented Darrell uh, Towns. We represented Nelly, uh, Santiago, uh, Ms. Velasquez that is still there. And we, we did so many trips to Albany also to not only sponsor them, but to back them out in any thing or activities that they had. It's very important for a worker that works with families in a community to work with the leadership of that community. You cannot do it independently. You have to work with your leaders and you have to be there for your leaders so they could do 
for us in the community what is needed. And we thank God because, you know, out of that, a lot of housing came up, uh, also a lot of more centers and a lot of programs, rehabilitation centers, you know, for drug addicts, a lot of homes for the homeless and so many things True. that East New York has been blessed. I always oh, say yeah. East New York is a blessed community. Many uh, say that as full of crime, this and that, but I say we're blessed. I was born in East New York and I'm proud of Brooklyn, East New York. That was my Brooklyn myself. Family. I ain't mad at you. That was my crib. <laughs> and that, so, you know, I'm a bit of, have worked for many years for East New York, Brooklyn, East New York. Well, what made you go into uh, ministry? Uh, it was a call from God. Um, when I was Listen a teenager, to the call. I used to be afraid mm -hmm. to go up to church and I used to pray a lot. And one day I had a dream and in the wall, I saw the word Mizpah, that's M-I-Z-P-A. I didn't know what that was. I didn't even know that was in the Bible. So I called the pastor the next day and I told him I had a dream and I saw something on the wall. Does that mean that I'm being punished? You know, like Daniel? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Mizpah is a Bible Institute seminary in Puerto Rico. And we had meetings, we, we plan on sending you there to study the word of God. So right there, you know, I connected with the call of God for my life. And I went there and while I was studying, I went to the Virgin Islands, to St. Thomas, La Isla de Culebra, and so many other Life places. Life over there, mm -hmm. the keep going, of yeah. The gospel, uh, Haiti, yeah. Santo Domingo, and, and wow. even in Puerto Rico, I started to do campaigns and preaching in the plazas. We had, you know, every town has a little plaza and with a stage, and we went there every weekend to preach. And when I came back, I became a leader within my denomination. But I said, there has to be something else for me because I'm working too much in the four doors of my church. And I want well, to go well, outside in the community. Oh yeah, outreach. Lord, you know, to reach mm -hmm. those that don't know the Lord. Amen. So know the Lord and be blessed by the Lord. So, you know, I did that. Mm -hmm. I did that, and little by little, the Lord uh, led me to other studies, which I accomplished. It wasn't easy. In the midst of those studies, doing my MDiv, Master of Divinity, I had an accident. So I really had to drag myself those last years to try to finish my studies. We had the requirement that in order to be ordained, to get full ordination, you had to have your MDiv not like many other uh, organizations that don't require it but my organization required the MDF, and i didn't know that was another blessing for me because i had no money but i had the call and i had the door open so i said let me go through it and trust the lord and the lord Amen. did provide you know for everything and i was able to complete my studies and right now i'm very active within the christian church disciples of christ yeah. I mean, Miss Miss Martinez, uh, Miss Miriam. Yes, uh, you have also had some uh, health issues. Would you mind sharing a little bit about your health issues? Yes, uh, I've been a little negligence because I had uh, diabetes, and uh, I always liked it to sheep. I mean, it was so hard to give up the soda the rice and beans, <laughs> the flour, and so many other things. You ain't and lying. I Come got on, yeah. point where it was getting higher and higher, you know, uh, the average. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was almost getting up to 11 and 12. So I said, I have to oh, make Lord. a decision. I, I have to practice what I preach. Yes, so, very you know, true. A few months ago, I started to give up many things. And uh, my diabetes have gone down now. The numbers have gone down. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking and about. Miraculously, it didn't harm my kidneys or nothing. That's what I'm glad about, too. You don't want to be on yeah. dialysis. Good. No. Yeah. So you were smart think. enough to know that that would lead, can lead to dialysis. Not many yeah. people know that. That's the number one. You know what I mean? You know anything else about dialysis, Mrs. Oliveria? 
I don't know too much about dialysis, but you know, uh, an appointment the doctor told me recently that if I didn't keep up the good work yeah. that I have, being obedient, it could lead to dementia. So you know, I don't want I don't want uh, my my brain to blow away. No, no, nobody do. No, no. I name and forget, you know, uh, where I'm at and things like uh, that. So diabetes leads to many illnesses. Mm. Especially heart condition and, and affects other organs also. Okay. And that so you know, we have to be careful. Especially when not, not young anymore. No, no, none of us are. You you're a fighter. Well somebody out there is, but you're a fighter and you're a warrior. You know, I gotta say that about you. Um, if you had to talk to anybody dealing with ministry or wanting to do the, the kind of uh, beautiful things that you do, the fantabulous stuff, um, what would you say to them or even a widow out there? Uh -huh. Well, you know, my heart has been to write a book on divorce because uh, sadly I went through a divorce and the emotions, the trauma that a person goes through. And a lot of people that are in different stages, you know, of divorce and the consequences of divorce go through a lot of hardship and they're alone. You know, no one is there with them. Like, you know, my experience was from being the first lady. Then when I began to preach and go to events, I wasn't the first lady anymore. Now they told me to occupy the last seats. And that, so, you know, that affected me a lot because when you have fame, when you have position, when you're known and everything, you're up there. Everybody praises you. But when you're down the hill, people begin to reject you. And in the midst of that rejection is when you have to raise up and continue your path and look for new ways to be blessed by the Lord and do the work that you're supposed to do. Not give up, not hang up the gloves, like we say in the Spanish language, but continue your ministry. We have to be brave. If we were to talk about the different stations, you know, we would take a lot of time. But in the midst of everything, we're more than victorious. That's what the Bible says to us. And if we uh, have confidence in the word of God, we're never going to be defeated. We'll always be what God intended us and intends us to be, his servants. And the Lord always suffers with us. We're not alone in the suffering. And, you know, the thing is that once you're knocked down, you have to get up. And that's the hard part, getting up again. And that, But in the midst of everything, you know, I was able to get up again and uh, lift up my banner of victory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Wow. Well, you need all of that. You know, you done put on the whole armor of God. I see you had the breastplate of righteousness. You had the shield. You had, you know, you had the word of God all together, you know. You had yes. all of it. The thing to protect the mind, you know. The devil's a liar about, you know, dementia and everything else because you got so much to do still and you've done so much if you had to give a shout out to anybody who would you give a shout out to well you know i have to also praise the people that were there for me because when i was rejected there was always someone there that would rise up and lift my hands there were so many that if i begin to name them and not name the people that I have to name, I'll be in trouble. Uh, you'd be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, when one door closes, the Lord has another one open for you. You have to depend on that. You have to have faith on that. And uh, I've been told it, you know, by many good people, like Reverend Maria Lopez, uh, also some other chaplains, other ministers and pastors. There was one pastor, Alicia Cortez, that also works for the Board of Ed. She helped my kids in the midst of that painful moment. And she said, your kids are going to my church and I'm gonna be the spiritual mother. And she took them. And, and she really, you know, helped them and uplift them.
today that's why one is a musician my daughter preaches in, in texas and abby is also a, a social worker for uh another program here in uh bronxville and she's doing good work she's a supervisor there also so all my kids have good jobs they serve the lord and that's because the lord helped me to be a faithful mother Think of a child would, Amen. yeah if i would have uh just flipped away probably i would have had a really broken home broken house mm -hmm. like we say yeah. but i was able to maintain my kids together i had to give up a lot of responsibility because when you're in a crisis situation you want to be there for your family family you comes first yeah. if family does not come first you're lacking obedience in the lord because the law says yeah. your house is first above everything else you you, you had your house first yeah go work outside and leave your house abandoned in wow. necessity god has not called us to do that when we're faithful to him in the little he'll be faithful to us in the big like i say Woo! listen to that that's all right you better go ahead you done preach you done told it you done shared it well, boy, I hate the show to end, but boy, got to end. But let me tell you something. You said a lot. You did a lot. I know your testimony ran, ran out there and blessed and helped a lot of people. Thank you for being a blessing on the show, being a blessing in my life, and being a blessing to so many others. Keep doing what you do. God has put a charge on your life, so just go out there and get them. I ain't mad at you. Much love for you. You have a beautiful, blessed night. And thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, Elisa, thank you for who you are. Also, I thank you're welcome. You thank you for who you are, are as well. And not <laughs> only you, but Delphine, Iris, yes. Sonia, and so yeah. many other. Daisy, so many other. All of them. Part of my team. Yeah. Rod and John and Miss Johnson. Yeah, all of them were out there. The teachers, the whole team. Even yeah. down to the, the, the custodians. But yes. I'll say good night. And I'll thank you, Mr. Uh, Steve. Got a show coming up, and uh, you know, I'm trying to be on time, trying to do better with my time because I love to talk and I love I love my guests. But yeah. you have a beautiful, blessed night. Do what you do, and thank you so much once again. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Anytime, Miss Oliveria. God you. bless. Good night. You guys have heard it. You've seen it, you witnessed it, and you now you understand it just a little bit better. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed night. I'll see you next week. Thank you to all the supporters. I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night. Peace.